you know, with, with as many teams that are tanking now, right? Um, I think there was like a stretch maybe in the middle of the season, you guys weren't playing great, then, right? You go visit the Reds, and now all of a sudden like you're on a winning streak again. Um, you mentioned game one, obviously that's the guy, right, in Clevenger that they probably don't want out there, right? Once they're down there, not, that's the guy you guys hit. Um, I don't know, is because of the way the competitive balance of the game is the way it is right now, do you think that that can be a bigger season to be kind of misleading in a way, or at least in regards no, to because I think everyone, you know, it's, it's all relative. And other good teams also played all the other teams. And I feel like against good teams and good pitching, we performed near the top in general. We played against those Padre pitchers a lot. And we had a worse string of at-bats during these four games than we did in the you know during the regular season and how much of that is them adapting to something how much of it is us being slow reacting how much of it is it is you know batted ball luck how much of it is you know not handling moments i mean there's all kinds of different things and uh, to dig into and we're going to a lot of times firm answers are hard to come by. You know, we want clear answers and things that, um, you know, do everything, you know, help us in, you know, figuring out how to do things better the following year. Sometimes it's easy to do, sometimes it's not. And digging in on why we didn't cash in on those opportunities <laughs> is not the easiest thing, but we're gonna spend time and be as thoughtful as we can. Obviously, I, I get that, right, you've got to get to the playoffs first. You have to get through kind of a six-month regular season. Um, but if you were to say, just kind of in a bubble, in a vacuum, able to construct a team just for the playoffs, how much would that differ from the team that you've constructed, you know, like say after the winter going into a season? And is there a way you think maybe kind of bridging those two things if they are different? I mean, I guess a different way to answer that, if you're asking me if I think the best team wins the World Series every year, I would say no. I think the hottest team wins the World Series every year, and so it's how to put us in the best position going into October to be the hottest team. Um, you know, 2017, we went through that cold streak, we got hot, and we rolled through the playoffs until the World Series. You know, 2020. Each year has its own kind of different narrative to it, but. I don't believe that the best team wins the World Series every year. I think that's are, they, are those, are, I guess, are, those, are they two different things though, right? There's a best team over like a six month thing, and maybe a best team for a tournament. But like, in your mind, are those but, two the same thing? I guess my point is, is that, I guess partly is how you define best team. But again, I think it is about the hottest team. I think you can look at, you know, after a series and say, oh, this team played better. And that's true. They played better than we did. That's not in dispute. But how much of it, you know, how much of it are things you can foresee in advance as opposed to after the fact? I think that's a really important distinction. Um, you know, I feel like the expectations here are incredibly high. And that's awesome. I love how passionate our fans are. Those expectations are shared by everyone that works here. In the front office, in the coach's room, Dave, our players. Uh, I personally don't think the criticism that Dave has received has been fair. Um, I think it's human nature to want to point the finger at someone. Um, and I feel like this was an organizational uh, failure in the postseason. I feel like, you know, our regular season goal, we accomplished. We put ourselves in the very best position you can to go out and win 11 games in October. We didn't come close to doing that. And I think there are fairly clear answers as to why, and others that aren't <coughs> as clear. But I think, you know, that passion is awesome and love it, but I feel like all of us are incredibly disappointed and, you know, at least 
the way my mind works is taking this moment, learning what we can from what has happened, and doing everything we can to avoid this going forward. Now, getting back to your point, what can we do going in to hopefully put ourselves in a position to plan October next year? And then once we're able to accomplish that, how do we put ourselves in the best position to be the hottest team during that stretch? I don't know the answer to that, but we'll definitely spend time trying to figure it out. Yeah. This isn't like track and field or boxing, right? Where you do you want sure. to talk after? Where you're kind of peaking for like a particular event, right? Boxing, they have like an eight-week training camp or track and field. You kind of train according to you know the calendar or whatever. Um, so given right, and obviously no one's been able to kind of figure that out, right? Over the years, there's been things that go in cold and get hot, whatever. Right. Uh, does it still feel like this one Lost that a lot of games to, in the regular season, and then came in and now, you know, have right. put themselves in a position to be in the NLCS. So it's easy after the fact, but before, would you have said, hey, they're going to do this? No, because it's easy after the fact to say, okay, here's how they've played, here's what they've done with runners in scoring position, here's how they've handled different moments. Yeah, and there's no... It, no secret why they are where they are right now. So do you feel like you just got on like yeah. Again, I answered this very clearly for you. If you want me to answer it again, I will. I don't know the answer in terms of how much of it is just baseball and how much of it is other things that you know we could potentially control. And you know, an example is in the seventh inning, Will Smith hits that ball 100 miles an hour that happens to go to Pro Far and not to his right or left. And Kim hits a ball, you know, into the ground that happens to because once he's playing up, go down the line. Like had it been this far, much further over, it's a double play. So those things are what we both love about the game, and can drive you crazy when you're on the other side of it. So how much of that is luck? How much of that is skill? How much of that is preparation? All great questions for us to debate at nauseum. <laughs>